Hello friends, welcome back. Today I'm going to do build a random quote machine. This is part of the front end libraries projects. Uh, front end library projects, we want to build a random quote machine. The objective is to build a code pen app that functions similar to the one that they show here. And you want to fulfill these user stories. Uh, you can use a mix of HTML, JavaScript, CSS, Bootstrap, SAS, React, Redux, and jQuery to complete this project. You should use a front-end framework, like React, for example, because this section is about learning front-end frameworks. Additional technologies not listed above are not recommended, and using them is at your own risk. We are looking at supporting other front-end frameworks like Angular and Vue, but they are currently supported. They are not currently supported. We will accept and try to fix all issue reports that use the suggested technology stack for this project. Happy coding. And here they've got a list of the things. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm gonna do this the same way that I do all of our projects. I'm going to use Git to push it so we have a live project. And I'm going to build it from scratch using the terminal and a text editor. So if you want to learn to do it with the code pen, you can do it, um, then you're gonna have to find some other uh, tutorial. So yeah, let's put this up in the corner. Um, I'm going to open their code pen project here just so I have it live. Um, but the first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to start off by opening up my uh, terminal. Oops. Um, and then the terminal's down here. I, I always I just put it in the bottom corner. So I'm going to change directories into the desktop. If I list out, I've only got three folders here, code, life, and multimedia. My desktop's really clean. That's why it looks like this. LS will list out whatever's on your desktop. Um, and I just do PWD so you can see I'm on the desktop. So now I'm going to make a directory and I'm going to call it a random uh, quote machine. Oh, this is JavaScript world, so we should be a quote machine. Cool, and now you see the folder popped up here in the top right corner. And so now I wanna change directories into the random quote machine. And if I list out, there's nothing there. So the first thing I wanna do is create an index file. So I'm gonna to go touch index.html. And now if we list it, it's there. And so now I wanna go open and I'm gonna say open in my text editor. If you have a different text editor other than Atom, you'll just wanna put the name of the application you wanna open it in there. And then I'm just gonna type in index and then I hit tab and the uh, it'll auto fulfill. So that should open up Atom text editor, nice. And now I wanna also open this index in uh, Google Chrome. So I just hit up and then I came back and I'm like, Google Chrome. Um, cool. <clears throat> now it opened in a non-incognito window. I like doing this in incognito windows. So I'm just pushing it over there. That's probably not important for you. So now the first thing I wanna do is just uh, test to see if this works. Um, so I'll just say, random uh, random quote random quotes and I'm closing the h1 tag and then I'm going to refresh here awesome so now we're working with the application I've got the random quotes here we've got an index file and so now I want to put in the JavaScript testing framework that um, free code camps supports us with and so the, the uh, let's yeah let's build this to be a more uh, official we want to make this HTML and close HTML this is stuff I don't think they actually taught it in um, in the free code camp work but this is something I read a book called um, something HTML5 and so you just kind of have to learn this stuff and memorize it um, it's in every single web page, so you can you see it everywhere that you go. But you want to have a head and then a body in your HTML documents. And then what we want to make sure that we have our because we're um, we want to run the testing framework within the body of the quote. So you want to make sure that you have this body tag, and then it, in, within the body tag, we want to go uh, script, and then our source for the script is this guy, and then we need to close the uh, tag. So within the body tag, <clears throat> we have a script where we load this JavaScript bundle from free code camp. So if I save here and I come back over to our index and refresh, awesome. So now we have the, fr the testing framework here. 
And so I can click down to here and click random quote machine. And I can run the tests here and it'll run the tests. And it says they're almost all failing, which is exactly what we want because we haven't started yet. So the next thing is uh, we'll just start addressing the tests. This is uh, it's called test-driven development. It's a great way to code because you can build tests quite easily and then you can have people write and then you can write your code to that. Um, and so it re repeats the instructions here. The first thing it says, I can see a wrapper element with a corresponding ID of quote box. Okay, cool. So for the first thing, we'll just get rid of this random quote. We don't need that anymore. We can go wrapper. And we want the ID to be equal to quote box. And then we close the wrapper. Wrapper with a W, not an R. Okay, refresh the page. And then we run the tests. And now we have one, our first test is passing. This is cool. It shows that we're making uh, progress. Uh, so within the quote box, that means the wrapper, I can see an element corresponding with ID of text. Okay, so within it, so within here, we want to say an element with a corresponding ID of text. So let's just use a div and we can go ID text. And then if I save this, I don't need to have it on a separate line yet because we don't need to know what's there. And then I refresh the page and we run the tests. We'll see that this test is passing now. Uh, within quote box, I can see the corresponding ID of text. So we've got that one. Uh, now within the quote box, I can see an element with the corresponding ID of author. So within text box, we can see a correspond we can see an element with a corresponding ID of author. So if I save this and then I refresh and run the tests, um, we can see this one's passing now. And so within the quote box, I can see a clickable element with a corresponding ID of new quote. Cool. So a clickable element could be a button with an ID equal to new quote. And if I were to refresh the page now, we would hope that test number four passes, which it does, which is great. Um, within quote box, I can see a clickable A element with a corresponding ID of tweet quote. Awesome. A. Um, ID equals tweet, quote, close A. And then we should probably add something in here like tweet, quote. And then our new quote should also say, we should have, this is the text on the button, Q-U-O-T-E. So if I save that and then we refresh the page, if I actually close out of here, you can see we've got a button for new quote and then I have an A link for tweet quote. Um, Probably is not passing the tests right just yet. Um, sometimes these tests take for a second to go. Oh, but I can see a clickable anchor element with a corresponding ID of tweet quote. Okay, cool. So that's working. Um, if we want to make it more of a of a clickable link, we can just do this for now and make it so the source is just a pound key. And now here it's saying on first load, my quote machine displays a random quote with in the element with the ID equal to text. Okay, so when we load the window, we want there to be um, a random quote within here. And so now we're getting into that. Um, here we have on first load, my quote machine displays a random quote with the author in the element, okay. And then when the new quote is clicked, we fetch a new quote. So yeah, let's just do the first thing that we can do first. Uh, the first thing we can do is say when the w document is loaded, we uh, add a new quote to the text box, right? And so first thing we could do is go uh, script. So we're going to be using JavaScript. And then we say, <clears throat> this is one, this is what threw me off really bad when I first was doing this a few years ago, is you need to wait for the window to load because the HTML loads super fast. And so you, what you want your JavaScript, HTML basically goes immediately, but your JavaScript will run afterwards. So um, what we want to do is go uh, document.window.onload. And then we're going to set that equal to a function. And I'm just going to call it init. 
for today's purposes. And we're going to call the function init. And then within here, we're going to come up with some stuff to do. So the first thing we can, we want to get this text element. So here, I'll save this and then we can just console.log uh, JS loaded. And then this will give us an idea if we refresh the page here and we press uh, Alt Command I, we'll see in here that we'll see in the console. And the console is where we're going to be able to see a lot of our JavaScript stuff. So um, window. Oh, document.window. Okay. JavaScript. Okay. Init has not been called. Um, but in here, I can go init. I could type it. The, I can tell that because there's no errors here, this JavaScript has loaded. And so if I were to run the function init in the console, you'll see it says JS loaded. So that's what's going on. So, oh, okay. So I want this function to be called when the window is loaded. So that's not working. If I refresh this page, this uh, console log is not being executed. And it's because I made a mistake here. It needs to be window.onload. Okay, save it and refresh. Okay, so now we see the JS is being loaded. Okay, on just when I refresh the page, the JS is loaded. That means that it's running this function when the window is loaded. This was very tricky for me um, initially because I would have all this stuff working in the console, but I couldn't get it to load initially. So the idea is that the HTML is rendered and then the JavaScript is able to execute. And then what, so um, when the window loads, we're doing the init function and the init function is right here. And so now we're playing with JavaScript. <laughs> so the first thing um, we wanna do is uh, get the text element, right? So we can say um, uh, document, so that document means get all the things on here. And then we say get element by ID. And then that just means we're going to look for an element based on the ID and our ID is text. So we want to put, get the element by the text. And we, then we want to say uh, inner uh, text. And we want to set this equal to, for now we'll just go a string of useful programmer. Cool. And so now if I refresh the page, cool. This is printing out. Uh, I'm going to style it real quickly just so it's a little bit easier to read. Um, this is just going to be just for development purposes. I'm just make everything on the document um, of a font size uh, equal to uh, two rem. Cool. And so now we've got bigger stuff to work with, so it's easier to see what's going on. Um, so yeah, that's the pretty good. All right, so we'll keep going now. Um, if I run the tests, we see on first load, my quote machine displays a random quote in the element with ID text. So yeah, the test can't really differentiate between whether it's a random quote or not, but now we are proving that on the first load, we're displaying a quote. And all we have to do is um, change it so that this string is becomes a random quote rather than just the words, uh, whatever is hard programmed onto there. Um, so yeah, and here it's also saying on first load, my quote machine displays the random quotes author in the element with ID of author. So here we could just say, do this again. And instead of saying text, we can go in here to author. So document.get element by ID, and then we get author and we set the inner text to, uh, yeah, um, the author. And so now if I save this and then refresh this page, you'll see the author is here, useful programmer, the author. And uh, if we get the new quote, nothing happens. But now I think we'll pass another test because we're, now we're just generating something to fill in with the author. So yeah, we've completed this one. On the first load, my quote machine displays random quotes author in the element with ID of author. And uh, for some reason, the tests are taking a long time to run right now. But um, okay, so the next one is when the new quote button is clicked, my quote machine should fetch a new quote and display it on in the text element. Okay, so right now the button doesn't do anything. So we should set it up so that it has a, uh, a function. So we say um, on click, and then we want to uh, this is going to be this thing. So I'm going to call this uh, generate. 
quote. And we want to make sure that we execute it. So on click, JavaScript is told to generate a new quote. And now we need to actually um, create that function. So function, uh, generate quote, and that's going to be, and then we'll just, for now, just console.log uh, generate quote. And if we save this and we refresh the page, um, if we inspect the source, again, command alt I, and then you go to console. If we click here, we can see the generate quote this string is being put, sent to the console. So now we know that on click, we generate quote and the console is logging generate quote. So instead of generating a quote, <coughs> instead of generating a quote, we want to um, append new information to our um, text element and our author element. Um, so yeah, really what we could do is move this guy, these down to here, and so that when we click when we generate when we click generate quote we we get these elements and set them to new strings and then we just do this uh, function on load as well and so now we only have to write the generate quote thing once so if I were to save this and then we could say um, console dot log uh, quote generated and I were to save this and refresh the page quote generated we did it right on the refresh. And if we do new, new quote, it uh, generates a new one as well. And so that's, now we've got the sort of functionality for the, um, for the way this works. Okay, so what would be the next move? Um, well, really what we need to do is start coming up with new quotes. So yeah, let's, like, let's look up some quotes, like uh, Jimi Hendrix quotes. Uh, cool. Now... I don't know if this is real, but we can just grab these. Uh, when the power of love overcomes the power of the world, no peace. Okay, let's say Jimi Hendrix said that. And so now let's create a new object. So const uh, quote bank. You could do this any way, any way you want. You could be like let quote bank. Or you could say... Uh, their quote bank, or you could go uh, const quote bank. And we're going to set this equal to an object. And then this is a string, uh, so we want to format it properly. Since I just copied it off the internet, it's not really... Oh, actually, let's make this an array so it's enumerated. Uh, so yeah, the quote bank is an array. And um, yeah, so now if I were to save this, Oh, const, since I'm using const, I should use uh, capitals. And uh, so, so I've saved the index file here. If I were to come back over here and refresh the page, I could actually call uh, quote bank. And you'll see that pops up in the console. So we have access to it with JavaScript. Now, this is the quote, but we also need um, the uh, author of the quote, right? So let's uh, make it... So yeah, we want to make this into an object. And within the object, we're going to have two key value pairs. The first one is author. Oh, no, the first one is quote. And we set that equal to the string. And then we need to have another key value pair of author. And then here we're just going to type in Jimi Hendrix. Cool. And now if I were to save this, refresh the page, and we check out quote bank, we see that it is an array with objects in it. So if we go quote bank, uh, the first one, and then we go dot author, then we've got Jimi Hendrix. And if we do this dot uh, quote, we've got when the power of love overcomes the world will know peace. So yeah, now we can assign more of these. So we've got this as an, an enumerated sense, right? Because we've got quote bank at position zero. So we, we probably just need a few more um, quotes in order to get this thing to work. And uh, so yeah, I'll just copy this in here for now. 
and then we just need to fill these in differently because now we've got three quotes. So let's get a, uh, let's see, what's another person that we could get to for quotes? Um, Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash quotes. Uh, oh man, I love this website because they make it hard to copy them. How well I have learned that there is no fence to sit on between heaven and hell. <laughs> Some dark Johnny Cash stuff, I like it. Okay, so now I've got this in here, and now we're going to go Johnny Cash. Okay, so now we've got a second quote. Uh, this is one, two, and three. Let's see. And then how about um, Sunhouse quotes? Sunhouse is an old blues musician that I really like. Let's get a quote from him. Uh, anyways, I just remember one. Sunhouse has a quote that's, don't you mind people grinning in your face. And that's Sunhouse. Okay, sweet. So now we have a list of three quotes. Um, so if we save this and we refresh over here, we could do our quote bank. We can see in the console that we have access to this, right? So the first one is the Jimi Hendrix. The second one is the Johnny Cash quote. And this, uh, the third one is the Sun House quote. And uh, yeah, we can access them too. So we've got the author. And then we'll just get a string. And so when we generate the random quote, instead of saying useful programmer, here, what we can do is actually just say uh, quote bank at position. Oh, but that's the thing. We need to be able to randomly generate whichever one. So for now, let's just do quote bank two dot uh, quote. And then here we're going to put the author. Instead of the quote, we can put the author. And now we're actually going to randomly generate a, you know, the initial, we're going to actually ran, randomly, we're not going to randomly generate, but we're pulling sun house and don't mind people grinning your face from there um and but the problem is right now is it's always just setting it to two so we need to create a random number um based on zero to three which which can do that so we want to just make um instead of saying zero to th make making a random number between zero and three we should make it uh, a random number times a, a random number for whatever the length of the quote bank is right so yeah, let's go into here and then we've got our console here. This is um, uh, command alt i and now I'm in the console. So we've got our quote bank. And so we know that quote bank dot length is equal to however long the quote is. So if we were to add another quote into here, into the quote bank, we want to be able to randomly select for however long the quote bank is. So we should just, I'm just gonna kind of make this um, we're just going to code along here. So we could say let uh, quote quote size is equal to the quote bank dot length. Um, we could say we could say let well what we want is a random number, right? So math dot random. If we call that function, we get a random uh, float between zero and one but not including one. So math.random, if it's math.random times three, um, that shouldn't be right, math.random. That's weird. That's crazy that it didn't work up here. Oh, no, this was at position zero. Okay, so here, now we're getting zero, two, and one. So math.random times three, but if we do math.random times uh, quote bank dot length, then we're gonna get a m number that's in between uh, zero and three, but we want this to be uh, rounded down to the nearest uh, integer. So we're going to say math dot floor and call and then pass in that. 
And now we're getting a random number that's between one, uh, or, uh, a zero, one, or two. Now if we were to add in another um, object, our quote bank dot length would be uh, longer and we would end up getting, yeah, now we're getting threes, which means that we could have, we, we're calling this one. So it's dynamically programmed set to whatever quote bank we pass into it. I hope that makes sense. Um, so yeah. Uh, so here we have the f function. We can call this, this is giving, getting us our random number, right? So we can say let random uh, index is equal to math.floor times quote bank dot length. And here we already set the quote bank dot length, so we can say quote size. And so, yeah, that works here. Um, if we were to call that here, we're going, oh, quote size is not defined in here, so we need to define the quote size. And then we set the random index equal to that. And so random index is now an integer that we can use. And if we do quote bank, quote bank at random index, we're going to get a random index object. Huh. Quote bank random index. Oh, random index was selected once. We would have to call random index again in order to get a different one. But this, every time we click, it's going to, uh, the user is going to cycle this function. So the random index is going to be um, set again and then the quote um, so yeah, what we can do now is we can say, uh, we can say let our uh, random quote data is equal to the quote bank at the random index. Quote bank at the random index, yeah. And so now if we were to refresh the page, I think we would have random quote data. Oh. Random quote data. Oh, that's set within the scope of this one. So yeah, we've got a random quote data here. So yeah, let's say the quote length, we've got our quote size. So that's three. So what we're gonna do is be calling, oh weird, zero, two, our quotes. Oh, that's the length of it. Yeah, and then the random index is going to be equal to that times the uh, quote size at that position, at that size, so our random index. So because it's one, when we go quote bank at position one, we're going to be, this is zero, and then this is one. So this one is going to be, we're gonna set our random quote data is equal to that at the random index, right? So random quote data. So here, now we're getting this Johnny Cash. This is our randomly selected quote. Um, so now we can take our random quote data, and so if we do random quote data dot author, we get Johnny Cash, and if we do quote, we get the Johnny Cash quote. So here, what we want to set the text element to our random quote data dot quote, and then our random quote data dot author. It's author and quote. And now if we save this and we refresh the page, we should be getting a random quote, and every time we click new quote, because when we click the new quote button, we generate quote, which calls this function, which gives us a random number, and then uh, assigns the quote and the author to the document. So when we click the quote, we see now we've got Johnny Cash, Jimi Hendrix, and uh, Sun House all cycling through. And let's run the test and see where we're at. Okay, so when new quote button is clicked, my quote machine should fetch a new quote and display it in the text element. Awesome. So that's working. And we're just waiting for the test to complete. Um, we could come back over here and check out here. Uh, okay, so number nine, my quote machine should fetch a new quote's author when new quote button is clicked and display it in the author element. A quote author. Okay, so this is actually functioning. Um, I'm not exactly sure what's going on here, but this is a problem with the thing because we can, with the testing, because we can see that if you click this, the author changes. It's Jimi Hendrix, uh, it's Johnny Cash now. And so my guess is maybe the test just broke or something for that. 
And then for the final one, okay, we want to, I can tweet the current quote by clicking on tweet quote element. Okay, so um, this is gonna be fun. So we want to, I'm gonna come over here and just check out to see how this works. So this one, here they've got a Napoleon Hill quote and it's, this is the, tw the, tw uh, the tw tweet button. So if I were to inspect this, you can see that they are setting the H ref. So this is the button for the tweet, and then this is what it's linking to. So what we want to be able to do is, um, well, I'm just going to, we basically want to copy that a little bit. We can t tell right here that we can ignore the styling, but we can see that it's a target of underscore blank, and it's an A element with a class equal to button. Um, so here's our A element. Let's set the class equal to button. But that's not important, that's for the styling. Another thing I'm noticing is that the target is equal to underscore blank, so it opens in a window. So we're gonna set target equal to underscore blank. Target equals underscore blank. I've just memorized this. Basically, this is just means open in a new window. So if we go back to our index page and we refresh, we've got our new quote, it's generating properly, and our tweet quote isn't linking out. Well, why is that? Tweet quote. Maybe it needs to be. Oh, I put source. It should be href. Now, if we refresh, cool. Turns out class equals button doesn't make a difference, so I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to refresh. So now we've got a link that opens in a new window. But it opens the root page. What we want to do, if we inspect this, the uh, href is equal to pound. We don't need it to be equal to pound. We want it to be equal to a Twitter URL, like a clicked tweet URL. And so what we can do here is take apart this. Let's go edit as HTML, and then we'll take apart their href. So here is the uh, link text. And you can see that it's being programmatically generated. Um, so yeah, let's just uh, take it out. And so first we'll say, let Twitter, we're going to say Twitter link. So we're going to set that equal to this. Um, so currently we're just going to set it equal to tweet whatever it is that was on the free code camp. So if we refresh our page and we clicked here, we would see, oh, it didn't work. Oh, that's right. So um, yeah, we need to make it so that we set the href of this equal to Twitter link. So we can say like, uh, let's try to figure out from here. Um, document dot get element by ID. And then within the get element by ID, we want to get our uh, tweet quote ID, right? And so cool. If I call that, uh, the console shows us where it is on the screen. Um, so I think you can do something like set href, set href of using JavaScript. The href of an A button. Oh, dot href. Okay, cool. So dot href uh, is equal to, uh, let's just say a uh, useful programmer. For now. Now, if I inspect this element, okay, cool. Do you see? It's going to useful programmer. So this is how we set the href. Um, cool. But we don't want it to do that. We want to set it to a string. So let's pull this out of here and set it over here. And now we're going to go do document dot get element by ID uh, tweet quote. So we're getting the quote and we're setting this equal to let's set it equal to our Twitter link. Even though our Twitter link is obviously a mess right now, we're just making it so that this is working. So I refresh the page, come back over here and inspect this element and we'll see, this is actually the tweet. And so if I were to click this, it's uh, pulling this up. Um, it's pulling up the Napoleon Hill quote. We want it to be pulling up our random quotes. So we're gonna have to uh, change this here. So uh, yeah. First thing we can do is just take a look at this. Here it's got HTTPS, Twitter, intent, tweet. It's adding a hashtag of a quote in here. 
Um, so yeah, we could probably get rid of this because it's not related to free, to, uh, free code camp anymore. Um, amp, I'm not sure exactly what that does. Well, let's just leave this all end here until we get to right about here is when the quote goes from being kind of generic to being specific to the Napoleon Hill quote. So one thing we could do is say, um, is break it down. So we could go Twitter link, and then we just add the rest of this onto here, uh, plus equals that. And now let's refresh the page and see if it still works. Cool, so it still works. And so now we can see that there's something to work with here. Um, I could say, this is kind of like, here we're adding, uh, we add the quote, and then, here is where it stops again. So we could say, put this on a new line, say add the author. Uh, Twitter link plus equals there. And so now we've kind of um, broken it down. This is the, <coughs> this is the way it's always going to look. This is the quote that we're going to want to enter in here. And then, this is and then this is the author. And so if I were to refresh the page here and do this, you'll see it's still working exactly the same way. I've just sort of like changed the way that we're thinking about it. And it's, this is being generated dynamically. So if we've got our random quote data here, and um, so our random quote data, we could actually just throw the quote in here, right? Um, but we don't want to do that yet because there's this kind of crazy thing happening with all the spaces are, are replaced with pound 20. Um, so we could say, uh, well, we could say let the quote in API format. Let's call that. And then we can say our random quote data dot quote. So now we've got the quote and we can do dot replace. Remember the replace function? It's JavaScript. This uses a regular expression to replace things. So if you say visit Microsoft and you want to have it string dot replace Microsoft with W3 schools, it'll replace this word Microsoft with W3 schools. So we're going to go string dot replace. And the first we want to replace any spaces with uh, pound 20s for whatever reason. And so now our Twitter link we could add, now that, okay, I'll show you in here. Um, so yeah, let's do, we'll run through this in the console. The, the length we're setting, um, then we're setting the random integer, or the random index. So that gets us the second quote, we know we'll be dealing with the third sun house quote. The data is now random quote, uh, random quote data. So now we're dealing with the sun house object. And then if we go the uh, random quote data, random quote data dot uh, the quote, and then if we go dot replace the space with um, pound 20 here, what we're going to have is API styled. Don't you mind? Random quote data that replace. Okay, maybe not replace. It's only doing it one time. So what if, what if you want to do it a bunch of times? Oh, okay, so we need to make it uh, with a global flag. Maybe like this. Nice. Okay, so yeah, we're replacing a space globally with this pound 20, and that gets us a string that looks more like this, with each of the spaces being replaced, and um, in their place, we're setting a pound 20. Um, cool, so yeah, random quote data dot quote dot replace here. We can put that in there. And then instead of adding the Twitter link to this string which the free code camp had set up. 
we can just uh, put the uh, quote in API format here. So now if I were to save this and refresh this page, the tweet should have in this, you can see it says, don't you mind people grinning in your face on the href right there, which is exactly what we want. And so, yeah, we should probably do that as well. Let's get the author. We can, oh. No, no get, not yet. The, okay, what did I just do? Instead of the quote in API format, now we want to go author in API format. And then the dot, instead of quote, we want it to be author. And we're replacing the space in there with the, uh, with the pound sign, same exact thing. And then so instead of having it say Napoleon Hill here, we just want to go author in API format. And now if we refresh the page, you can tell if we were to click the quick tweet, it actually says, uh, it's, oh yeah, this is our Johnny Cash quote. And um, yeah, so that looks cool. This is actually kind of a mess though, because why does it have a, a, a why does it have a, a quote there? Oh, you know what? It's probably this guy, pound 22. So yeah, this pound 22 is probably why that's in there. If I come back here and refresh and click here, nice. Now we don't have the quotes on there. Uh, that's just a design choice. I'm just gonna make this as simple as possible. So uh, we don't, you don't have to worry about that. Um, yeah, so it does, does look bad because the Jimi Hendrix doesn't have a space or a dash in there. Um, so Twitter link, author in API format. So this is where we're getting the author. And so here what we could do is add a, a space and a dash and a space here. Um, so then I'll close these guys out. Refresh this page. If I click here, we've got with a space, a dash and a space. So I've, yeah, I'm just um, adding, this is the way that I'm adding in that space into the uh, Twitter link. Um, cool. So yeah, if I refresh the page, Actually, I think that this might actually complete the whole project. If I run the tests, it looks like it passes. Okay, cool. So yeah, this is a, this is like a, the bare minimum of what you need to pass this test. So obviously you could um, enhance the quote bank by a lot by adding more cool quotes to it. Um, but yeah, for now, this is exact, this is functioning. Um, yeah, let's see. Instead of just making this giant, we could make it 1.5 REM. If we refresh the page, it's a little bit more, it's sized a little bit better. We could go padding and just add like uh, 20 pixels um, to the uh, top, right, bottom, and left. And that'll give us some spacing. Um, <clears throat> actually, maybe it's margin. So I'm adding margin to every element. Uh, we could say text align center and if i refresh the page now we've got it um aligned in the center uh new quote new quote jimmy hendrix johnny cash and it's got the click to tweet it's sun house quotes yeah so this is good and the tests seem to all be passing let's see oh one thing that i'm not let me just run back over the instructions we know we're passing all this stuff. They're saying, oh, one thing is they want us to use a front end library. Um, so we're already using HTML, JavaScript, and CSS to accomplish this. Um, this is not, I don't think it makes sense. We could use jQuery to do the, the um, we could use jQuery to do that, but this is really not necessary for this. So to f actually to fulfill this, we're gonna use Bootstrap here to make this styled up a little bit better. So uh, let's go to documentation. Uh, the quick start for, so now here we, we're going to, um, I'm gonna get rid of the style here and we're just going to go through the instructions on setting up Bootstrap for this project. So I got rid of the styling elements. If I come back over here, refresh the page, it looks like just really raw HTML. Um, so we'll just use what's called a CDN Instead of downloading Bootstrap and installing it, we're just going to use, uh, pull it off the internet. 
So we want to copy and paste the style sheet link in your head, in the head element before all other style sheets load to load our CSS. So here we don't have, I just deleted the style sheet. So I'm going to add, um, this is our link to the bootstrap CDN for their CSS. Uh, many of our components require the use of JavaScript to function. Specifically, they require jQuery, Popper, JS, and our own JavaScript plugins. Place the following scripts near the end of your page right before the closing body tag to enable them. Okay, cool. So let's copy these guys. And then this is our body tag. And then this is our closing tag. And they want us to add it uh, just before. So let's, uh, do we do it before or after? Let's do it before we load the free code camp. I bet it doesn't matter. Now, if I save this, uh, the starter template. So yeah, here they're showing us this. Um, the starter template would have been great to actually start off with. Um, we can actually use this to improve our own uh, code here. It says they have a doc type HTML. Uh, oops, so I'm gonna come back up here. I'm not sure if that's really required, but we're gonna do it anyways. Lang is equal to en. E uh, and then required meta tags, cool. So we wanna make sure we pull these guys in. Uh, if, you're, if you've got a bootstrap application and it's not mobile friendly, you wanna make sure that you've got these meta tags in here. And then our bootstraps, which is the style sheet and the stack, this is the exact same thing as this. And uh, so, here we go. That's what we need to add uh, bootstrap. Here they're showing us, uh, oh, there should be a title as well. So here it's a, instead of title of being hello world, we'll make our title um, random quote machine or generator for great musicians. And what, what does the title do? If I save that and I come back over here, you see how this says index right now? When I refresh the page, this will have the title on the tab. So that's how you set that. Title is really important for search engine optimization and that kind of stuff. Uh, body, obviously we're not gonna put this hello world in there. And we've already added this uh, JavaScript down here. And uh, yeah, so we have completed what we set out to do in terms, we've completed um, setting, adding this as bootstrap. So if we were to refresh this, uh, you'll see the fonts changed and we've got a little bit more, oh, the colors changed and everything. So now we're running on Bootstrap. Um, here, now I, now we can use Bootstrap classes. So I could go like class is equal to button, uh, button primary. And if I save this, tweet, uh, uh, tweet quote will be now blue. And if, let's see, we can do this um, here as well. Uh, button and let's make this one different color success if I save that now we've got new quote and tweet quote they look cool, cool. and uh, uh, yeah I think bootstrap has like components like content uh, yeah well we could just yeah let's see what should we do here the next move would be to, Bootstrap has this stuff called cards. And so you can make something, this is like a, a card element. Um, so let's see if we could just copy a cool card. Yeah, like this one, this looks cool. So let's grab this and then throw it within the quote box. And now if I save this and come back to our quote machine, now we've got this big card, which looks pretty cool. Um, now, instead of having special title, we should have, well, I don't think we need special title, featured. Featured, okay, card header. We don't need a header. We can get rid of that. Here's our card body. Within the card body, we should add, within here we can add, we can move our text into here. Cool, so now, I believe if we were to refresh the page, don't mind people grinning in your face. Cool, so this is our quote in the card, and now it's kind of formatted 
uh, that way. And uh, this is the button primary, go somewhere. We don't need that button there, but we just want our buttons to be within the card body. And so now if I save this and we refresh, we've got our new quote here. And then we want to take the author and move it within the card text. So instead of having this bootstrap uh, filler text, we want the author to be in there. Now if we save the page, now we've got that. Cool. New quote. Jimi Hendrix, Sun House, Johnny Cash. Um, nice. And one of the things I see that's a problem is our card is uh, it's, it's not in a great uh, position. So what we want to do now is say, and this might break the tests, but we'll do it anyways. Um, we're going to go div class is equal to container. This is just uh, uh, bare bone, like basic uh, bootstrap stuff. So in bootstrap, you just have to remember that you wrap everything within a container div. So now if I tab that out and save here, now we've got it formatted a little bit better. Um, within the containers, we want to have a row. So we go div class is equal to row. Close the div here. Save this and then refresh. Um, doesn't look like anything right now. So now our next thing we want to do is set this. Um, well, we can do uh, PY, which is padding um, for the top and bottom. And we can just do five here. And so if we refresh that, we can refresh. Uh, PY means padding for the top and the bottom. And you can do five. You can do any numbers between uh, one and five, I believe. So here you see the padding is really slight. Um, Oh wow, here it's getting bigger. Yeah, here it's got a space of two, and then here it's got a space of three. So this space is growing. And because we have such a simple application here, I'm just gonna make it uh, five. And um, cool. Uh, I really like using uh, block buttons. So I'm gonna go button block, save it. Now we've got, this is like much bigger. And uh, the card is alternating size based on uh, whatever, how big the text is. And so we don't want to do that. We want to keep it the same thing. So we're going to set this up into a column. Class equals a column uh, MD6. So that means it's going to take up half the width of the viewport. And we're going to say offset MD3. Uh, so three plus six is nine, it's offset, so that means it's going to be centered. There's gonna be three of offset, and then there's going to be six of the column, and then there's going to be three that isn't being addressed. And we wanna make sure that we close that div. If we save this and refresh, now we've got a quote machine, which, um, yeah, it stays the same time. Um, but I'm not gonna make this, I'm gonna make this eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and this two. Cool, so now I refresh. Now if I inspect here, I'll show you what I'm doing with this. Um, here we've got your container. Here we've got our row with the padding on it. Here we have our MD, offset MD. Uh, it's offset by two, which you can see there with the, uh, the yellow. And then the eight is the um, blue part with the green borders. And then our card is here. And then we have within our card body, we've got all the text and then our card text and this guy. Uh, I think, let's make the author um, text center. If we save here and refresh here. Oh, that did not work. Text center. Center. Horizontal spacing. MX auto. What happens if we do that? Oh, that didn't work either. Actually, I'm not even gonna worry about this, centering the text. Um, but we could make a P element and then, oh no, we've already got the P element. Uh, all right, I'm not gonna do that at all. Anyways, refresh the page. And now we have a bootstrap uh, front end version of this. So if I click new quote, um, because we've only got three, sometimes it does the same one a bunch of times. But if we click to tweet quote, it pulls up here, and uh, that is the spacing and the requirements. So this 
Um, outside of here, we could stay within this column. Uh, yeah, we could be like uh, div class is equal to card header and uh, random quote machine. And then close this div, refresh the page, and we've got a random quote machine here. I think I could go text header. Right? Yeah, okay, cool. Here's a random quote machine. We can click and then we can tweet it if we want. And this is just not the, the um, supreme uh, version of doing this project, but I think that this is uh, good enough because uh, it's important to not get hung up too much on these projects. Once you kind of start getting, once you get to this uh, point, I think that you've done a pretty good job of running the test and understanding things. The quote machine should fetch a new quote author when new quote buttons. I think what's going on, the reason that I'm failing this test is because I have such a small number of tests of quotes that it oftentimes will say the same one twice. Um, so yeah, maybe I could look for different quotes. Let's say like, um, let's find quotes JSON. List, quote list in JSON. Quote. Kevin, Napoleon Hill, Einstein. <laughs> Everybody likes these quotes by Einstein in them. Now I'm gonna, let's, let's make this, oh, how's this formatted? Yeah, this is quotes and then they've got it in a, in an array. That's what I want. I want it in an array. So I take this array and uh, I'm going to actually create a new page. Let's say here I've got index. Let's uh, touch um, quotes.js and then open quotes.js. I'm going to paste this in here and now we can say quote bank is equal to this. Uh, const. Uh, so each of these is set like that. Um, the quote and the author. It's set to a string, so I'm going to have to adjust this. Um, quote author. So yeah, I'm going to do some fancy stuff now. So command F. I'm going to use the reg regular expressions tool and go uh, dash author, and I want to replace that with a new line. And I don't want the author to be in quotes, so I'm going to replace it with that. Now if I find it here, you'll see it's picking up all the places where the author was set. If I were to do replace, it would look like that, which is not exactly what I want. You see the spacing's off, so I'm going to go forward slash tab here as well. And then if I command Z, so undo it, and then I do the replace again, now I'll be able to test it. So cool. And I actually want there to be a space between the um, colon. So I'm going to add, so here I'm selecting for the colon as well. Author, it should be selecting for the colon as well. Okay, and then what I want to do is replace it with a colon and a space. So if I replace here, you can see that we're keeping the space and we're setting author is equal to Robert Frost, but that shouldn't have worked that way. There should be a space in there. Uh, like this. So I'm gonna command Z, undo that, and then replace it here. So author Florence Nightingale, cool, Robert Frost. So I'm gonna command Z and command Z, and now I should be able to do this, replace all to all of them. Cool. So now, that's working well. Uh, I want to be able to do the same thing here. So instead of saying author, I want to uh, do the quote now. Oh, it's not popping up. So every time that I see this instance of quote, which happens each time all the way down to the bottom, I want to replace it with um, quote, uh, I'm going to replace it with quote and a new line. Oh, and I want that tab in there as well. So let's replace the first one and see if it works. Oops. Here it's quote. Um, so yeah, there's a bunch of tabs in between quote. I want to get, grab those too. 
Uh, yeah. Replace each of these with, no, I don't want a new line. I just want it to be quote and then that. And I want to grab the space too. Okay, cool. So find. So let's replace this one and see if it works. Nice. It pretty much works. So except for I'm missing one space. So I'm going to get rid of one space here. And uh, I'm going to command undo this. And then I'm going to replace that. Um, yeah, so this doesn't work exactly. No, it's not doing it the way I want. So command Z and then replace. Anyways, this is going to get the job done. This doesn't look, it's not spaced uh, exactly the way it needs to be, but I think that this would actually work. So if I save this, now I've got the quote constant over here. So I want to bring, instead of using these guys, this quote, so I'm going to comment this out. I'm going to use, I want to, I want to bring in that. So I'm going to say, um, I'm going to link the JavaScript up. So script source is equal to, I think it's quotes.js. So quotes.js. And then I'm closing the script. And now if I save this and come back over here, refresh the page, inspect the element, within the console, I should be able to go quote bank. Q, U, O, T, yeah, quote bank. And now I've got 102 quotes. Oh my gosh, it's like nonsense. Oh, there we go, Albert Einstein, there's some cool quotes. So yeah, you can see now that we've got the quote and the author set in here, Oh, cool. Even in here, we're, we've got a ton of uh, extra cool quotes to, uh, that we're utilizing in this uh, application. Um, there we go. Uh, yeah. If we wanted the author to be... Hmm. Do, 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 do. Yeah, um, I think that that's it. This is good enough for this project. Um, we're generating a new quote, and it's able to be um, sped out like that. Uh, yeah, this is exactly what they're looking for. And I think that this would be a pretty cool thing to have uh, in your portfolio if you're a developer. You can see that it's mobile responsive. If you go uh, Command-Alt-I, and then you come over here and look at it as if you were looking at an iPhone. So here I've got it set to iPhone. You see it looks pretty cool on an iPhone. It would work. If you were to put it to a iPad, um, it doesn't work as well with an iPad. But you could f you could change it to so that it would look better there. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. All the tests are passing on this, so it's good to go. Um, so yeah, that's the last uh, part that we want to do is in order for us to submit it to Free Code Camp, we need they say you know link your solution here. So what do we need to do in order to link our solution? We need to um, get our stuff working on the internet. And so what I want to use is called GitHub Pages. Um, I'm going to open a new window and sign into GitHub. Uh, I'm already signed into GitHub. So now we're still here. If I go PWD, you'll see our, we're in our quote machine project. If I list out our, sh our project, we've got our quotes and our index file. So what I want to do now is um, go git init. So that initializes a git repository. And then I'm going to come over here um, to my uh, GitHub. I've already logged in. Here I'm going to just say a uh, bootstrap a random quote uh, generator. OK, so this can be anything you want to name your repository. Um, and then now I'm going to create the repository. And now we've got a repository set up. So a random quote generator, you can say push an existing repository from the command line. So I want to say git remote add random quote generator and then git push u origin master. Okay, so what I need to do now is I need to commit my changes. So I'm going to say git add and I'm going to do a period. And so what does that do? If I go git status now, 
you'll see that these are added. And so now I need to commit them. So git commit dash m, meaning I'm going to add a message. Um, add random quote generator. And now I'm going to go git push. And so git push set upstream origin master. I'm going to copy that, paste it in. And now it should be live. If I were to refresh this page, you'll see that it's here. Um, and the cool thing about doing it this way rather than doing it at on CodePen is now you get this kind of open source tracking stuff. And a lot of people, if you're trying to be a developer, having a uh, a trafficked you know uh, GitHub account is a good way of getting attention and kind of showing that. Uh, you know a little bit about what you're doing. So here, now we've got the project is up here. Uh, let's go to settings. And then uh, we're going to scroll down. Here we have, where do they have it? GitHub pages. Cool. And so we want to do, it's designed to host your personal organization or project pages from a GitHub repository. So we want to go, we want to make the source our master branch and it's going to refresh. And then here we have a link to our project. So if I were to click here, um, so it takes a little bit for GitHub pages to generate. Um, so let's copy this. This is the link to our project. Um, <clears throat> with GitHub projects, it's a cool idea to create a readme so that when people go to your repository, it has something to say. So let's do that. Let's touch uh, readme. .md. So I've created a file called readme.md, open readme.md. So here we can do, um, we're going to do GitHub markdown and we'll just say a random quote generator. This just makes it so it's like a heading tag. I'll make it like a heading two tag. And then the way you do quotes or you do, you link things is by putting the target code in brackets and then following it up directly with a URL in uh, curly brackets. So if we were to save that and um, then here we've got a random quote generator. We basically just made a heading tag with a link there and it's going to show up here. So now we need to commit that change. So git status, git add, git commit, and we're going to add the message add a readme. So I'm going to, and then I'm going to, now that it's committed, I'm going to go get push. Cool. And so once that is added to the internet, if we refresh this page, we'll see that we have a random quote generator. Oh, it's a link. So people will be able to click it and then they'll go to this and it's live on your internet, on the internet. Um, and people can, it's not a tribute page. It's a random quote generator and they can run the tests and they'll be able to see, oh, cool. He made a project or she made a project that works and it's totally live on the internet. If somebody's logged in, they could actually use this. So you guys are uh, good to go. So now you can copy this link, uh, which is your live on the internet um, deployed with GitHub pages, and take it over here, throw it in the solution box and then say, I've completed the challenge. And that is it. That is how you do the first project, uh, the first front end library project. And so, uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed that one. I think, um, I know it's kind of different the way I don't use CodePen. I think it's kind of better to do it this way, but I think both ways are fine. Um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this one. We'll see you in the next lesson.